Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to watch this video. Before I get into the uh, the main episode and what we're about to look at with um, what I've done with Grandad Mac and the uh, the Atom uh, so far, just wanted to take the opportunity to say thanks. Thanks to everyone that's supporting the channel, people that have viewed so far. Got a few subscribers, not too many, but hey, that's alright. Um, but a couple of people in particular that I need to thank, definitely my dad for the loan of these tools that I'm using now. I know I gave him a quick mention in the last video with the uh, Whitworth sockets and stuff, but I've you know borrowed a few other things, bits and pieces since then, and he's really helping me out, so thanks heaps, Dad. And also a couple of um, family members from Gisborne, Leslie and Clive. I know you guys are watching this and, and keeping an eye on what I'm up to, and glad I'm doing you proud, and I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying watching and, and helping me out, but you guys have been a tremendous help to me, sourcing parts, information. Um, yeah, just, just can't thank you guys enough. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, Let's get into the episode and um, I'll show you what I've been up to. Cheers. Well, I just thought I'd um, get started on the next little stage here. Just um, messing about with a few bits and pieces. I guess now that the, um, the motor's done, the next thing to do is to try and get this thing mobile. Um, so, I'm going to start with a set of handlebars I've got up here on the bench. The toolbox needs some uh, needs some attention. These are the extra little nuts and bolts that were inside that toolbox. So I'm not really sure where these bits go. This almost looks the same as the um, the oil filler cap, thread wise and size wise. I haven't tried it, but it's got a grease nipple in the top and a couple of holes drilled through. So I'm not sure where that goes. Uh, a couple of extra bolts and screws laying around here. Split pin. And there was just a whole lot of rust and rust and rubbish inside there, so I'll clean that out. Um, yeah, handlebars aren't too bad. Just going to need a good clean up and repaint. The throttle linkage, it's a bit tight, so we'll, we'll work on that. It could even be the, um, the connector from the sand here that's tight inside there. So we'll have a good play with that, lube it all up, get it working well. Uh, once I've got the handlebars sorted, probably part of the same thing is going to be the, um, the frame down here, the chassis, base, whichever word you want to use for it. Um, I've chosen this one because it's got the bars out around the side. If you can recall from my first episode, um, I've got two of these and one doesn't have any traces of these bars on it. So I think this one's got a bit more character. I'm going to give this a good clean up. These are the, the hubs from down the bottom. This is off, off the far side and this is the chain drive sprocket that the axle runs through here so we've just got to really that one there just needs a clean and a put back on and this one I'll um, I'll do a little bit of painting on the outside here um, sure what else do we have to do a couple of hubs actually the um, the wheel hubs here um, we've had those apart all the screws are loose there and I've checked the, the ratchet mechanisms and the springs on the inside so they just need a good clean clean paint and uh, refill with grease on the inside wheels and tires I'm still not sure what direction I'm heading in with those one of the four rims that I had actually was a bit interesting I got a tire off this rim I saw these extra screws and bolts on the inside here and found out that this one of the four is the only one like this is a split rim so I got that open and got one tire one tire free but the others, I think I'm going to have to visit a, a tyre shop and they'll probably have a bit of a struggle getting those tight little uh, little tyres off those little wee rims and even sourcing the new tyres. I haven't gone too far down that track yet. So that's where we're at now. Handlebars, a chassis and frame, some wheels. Uh, I've still got this to take care of over here, the, uh, the covers for the chain drive. But I'm going to paint them all up at the same time. I don't need them urgently until I get the, the chassis and everything obviously ready to connect to our nice shiny engine. Sitting over here on the seat. So I thought I'd just uh, yeah make a make a start on some things today. The, the little toolbox is probably the first thing I'm going to attack. Under here it is, it's actually welded. There's a, a line of weld holding that on. What I'm going to do is get rid of that weld grind that free so that I can work on that toolbox separately and then I'll just run some little um, run some little nuts and bolts to hold that back on rather than welding it back on. It's going to make my job a bit easier with the tidy up so I'm going to start taking this to bits today, cleaning it up and um, yeah, go from there. 
Alrighty, so it's been about a week since I've filmed anything. Um, had some other stuff going on with this uh, life and family in general and back at work. So here's our handlebars anyway. I did a little bit of work. Got that toolbox taken off. Got the ends taken off. Throttle cables taken off. Um, yeah, just sort of just stripping down. I haven't got into much of the cleaning or sanding yet. Got the, the handlebar grips taken off. This one was pretty well melted with some solvent that had already been in there before or petrol or something. But we'll get that cleaned off. Um, yeah, a little bit that I've got to take care of that I've actually started on as well is apart from the sickle bar mower. I just want to make a start on this because I know I've got a bearing problem uh, inside here. This is the, the attachment that goes onto the side of... Oh, motor's the wrong way around. Can't show you that. Uh, goes onto the side of the, um, the reduction box and that little key runs into the, into the slot through here. But because of some abuse and some hard work in the past... Um, that's a little bit twisted and bent out of shape and I've actually got to grind that as you can see it's flared out and I can't get the um, can't push it back out from the inside of the bearing so borrowed a couple of little grinders and a Dremel sort of type attachment a mini grinder and I've got to grind away and get that down to a size that I'll get back out of the shaft and then I'll probably end up getting the whole section that runs all the way through this top machine up a whole new piece that'll come all the way through to the bottom with the slot cut in it so that's where I'm at I'm just gonna get a little grinder out and have a go at that now and then we'll um, once I got a bit more time up my sleeve I'll get a bit more carried away with some more of this cleaning as you can see nothing's really moved a lot apart from doing what I've done with the handlebars so we'll uh, yeah do a little bit of this grinding now and see how we get on and that stone's pretty soft I think you can see that the uh, actually it's a pretty old old piece of machinery that I'm wearing a groove in the stone so I'm going to try a completely different different machine and uh, have another go with something different I'll let you know in a minute okay so slight relocation down here to the floor um, what I'm trying out now this is actually a electric chainsaw sharpener with a little grinder in there for doing uh, chainsaw teeth but Relocated down here. This uh, runs off a 12 volt system, so I'm just um, running it off Big Tree's uh, battery up here. Unfortunately, the lead's not long enough to reach the bent, so we'll just uh, have a go down here and see if it works any better than that other little soft stone did. It's definitely um, working a little bit down in there. I can see the shinier stuff where the grinders hit, so that's good. Probably just need to explain why I've had to resort to this. Um, I've tried, you can probably see a few marks on there, banging and beating on it with a hammer. Um, as I said, you know, just from a, from a little bit of a hard life that this machine's had, this has been flared out and expanded that. Um, did have other suggestions on how to get it apart. I've tried heat. Um, that sort of didn't work really, it just expanded it more, made it worse. Um, another suggestion was, because I've got to replace the, the bearing in there that's really grindy and graunchy, was to take a little piece out of the bearing cage and pop all the balls out of the out of the bearing and then take it out separate, um, the inner and the outer, without the, the balls in the middle. Um, that would have worked to get it out, destroy the bearing, I've got to replace the bearing anyway, but I'd still have the problem of how I'm going to get the bearing back on onto the shaft afterwards. Um, I've tried cooling it. I thought um, putting it in the freezer metal contracts. I thought the um, the inner shaft would contract. It did work a little bit. I could still only get it about a millimeter down, and then it was just obvious how much this is flared out. So, yeah, this is a last resort, and I have tried other options. So, I've just gotta gotta do it this way now, unfortunately, and and we'll just um bit of a step backwards to make bigger steps forwards. So I'll carry on with this and see you later. So I've had a bit more of a grind at that. Um, sorry if there's any shadows down here and you can't see properly, but it is what it is. There's some jobs I've just got to do on the floor. So 
We're going to try punch this again now and hammer it and see if I can get it down any further than I did before now that I've loosened it up with that grinder. Hopefully it'll work. Let's see what happens. I think I need these this way around. A bit more height. A bit more clearance. Hopefully I shift. Working on it, get back to you soon. So close. Using the hammer straight on the head is probably mushrooming it out more, so I've probably just done a little bit more, but I need to grind off there, but a little bit more grinding. One more go, and we'll have it out. Might be asking why I skipped ahead to this uh, when I'm supposed to be working on the frame and the handlebars and the other stuff to get this thing mobile. Well, the sickle bar mower is probably the most impressive attachment that goes on this machine, and that's what I want to get running first um, once the machine's mobile. So if I can get this underway now, if this is going to take me a little while to get this piece machined or remade or repaired for in here, um, that can be in progress parallel to me working on other stuff at the same time. That way there's not going to be a huge delay between me getting it mobile and then having the sickle bar mower ready to put on, so... Yeah. Alright, finally, looks like we're on the winning stretch. A um, bit more grinding, a bit more banging. Got this massive uh, punch from my neighbour, just a piece of steel bar. Came over and gave me a hand for a little bit. Um, remounted this with a stronger screw, taking some of the bounce out of it that I was getting back off the floor. And I've actually got that down inside the head of the bearing. So I just put the camera back on just to catch the moment when it drops out the bottom, hopefully. So we'll give it a couple of hits and hopefully you will be witness to what goes wrong. <laughs> okay, so now it's in the ground. Here we go. So she's a stepped shaft by the look of that see it rotating inside there with a the sleeve inside so lift it up a little bit higher on another couple of bits of wood and tap it a little bit further Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off now. I think I've bored you enough with this part of the job, considering it's not even part of what this uh, episode's supposed to be about. I'll get this taken apart and show you what I'm going to do and what I've got to send away to get fixed and bearings and whatnot once I've got it all completely apart and back on the bench, eh? Alright. Right, finally a result, it's a part, um, yeah very 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 patient testing job this one. So this is the shaft that came out, you can see where I've had to grind away the burr to get that out. Uh, first bearing goes on, well it actually slides into the housing, I'll show you what it looks like on the outside but it slides into the housing and then I'd say all the bearings everything is pressed in. So first bearing, spacer. I'm not going to put it all back on because uh, it was a mission getting it off. Uh, spacer goes in the middle, second bearing on there. Then we have the cap which went over the top of the bearing on the shaft like so. Then there was a retainer clip. Now I think this is probably just half of it. Uh, fits into the groove inside here over the top of that cap once that cap goes in over the bearing. Retainer clip goes in to hold the cap in place. And finally, there's a circlet which goes around the outside of that. Um, there's no groove left there for the circlet. That's gone because of how much it was mushroomed out. And I've had to plan as we go along. But at least now that this is apart, 
we can run this job in parallel to me carrying on with something else so that when I'm ready for this you know I don't have to don't have to muck around we can get straight back into the next stage with this being repaired and ready to go okay I'll leave that at that for now and I'll get into cleaning up one of these frames carry on with those handlebars that I started doing and right add some more in glad that's out of the way hey guys here's today's little um, addition to the video we uh, got that thing squared away for now for the um, sickle bar mower let's just put aside and we'll work on that I had a really exciting phone call last night about these tires um, I've been trying searching on and off you know trying to find the uh, 12 by 3 size tires to replace these with got a really exciting phone call uh, uncle in Gisborne thanks very much Clive this is so muchly appreciated you wouldn't believe it uh, managed to source me some new tires so what he found through one of his contacts is that what was originally called a 12x3 tyre is now available and it's called a, I think he said it was a 350x6. So they're the same tyre with the same tread, or very similar anyway, might be a little bit chunkier but hey, same same style. Um, so now I'm going to be ripping the rest of these tyres off these rims. Um, one way trip yet again, there's no way that I think I can get these to pry off with screwdrivers or anything. But I'm going to do these the easy way. Now, if you didn't like seeing me use my woodworking hammer uh, on a bit of machinery, you're definitely not going to like this because we're going to be using a woodworking saw. So if you don't want to see this and it's making you cringe, then uh, yeah, pause the video for now or you know, fast forward the video. <laughs> Um, turn away, put the sound off, whatever you want to do, so you don't see me do this, but um, yeah, we're going to cut through these, get them off the rims now. Yay. Hey, hey. One, two, three tires. Nicely cut. <laughs> Those ones were straight. This one here was the one full of water. I wasn't too sure what was going to happen. So I, um, I actually cut it on an angle in a V pattern just to see. But the tube wasn't full of water. It was just full of water all in and around there. As you can see from the nice slimy grotty rim on the inside. But it's alright part of the job, we're cleaning them all up. So yeah, one, two, three standard rooms, and this fourth one is our split room, so no idea why there's one different, but hey, it's all cool. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to add into, my kindly neighbour was down at a, um, a shop the other day and came across this. Really cool little addition, it didn't come with this machine, and but hey, it's a, it's a little Villiers spinner, it looks like probably a, I don't know, a spark plug spinner maybe. Um, I've been trying different things around the place to see if I can find something it'll fit onto. Check the size, there's a big bolt there. No, yeah, still too big for that, so... I don't know, I'll find a use for it. But, um, at any rate, yeah. Cleaned up and, and painted up, it'll look quite neat. Also had a bit more of a tidy up around things this morning. Uh, we've got some new shelves, so we've got a 
got a little spot to keep the engine now on a shelf over here out of the way stop it getting damaged or knocked around by anything else so I have actually got a little bit of damage on it already unfortunately down in here that's when I was using uh, using Big Chief's pull start rope to start it up um, showing the family that we're around for a visit so but yeah she's got a nice little spot on the shelf there uh, compressor above it Webster compressor I don't know hopefully you've seen that video if not check it out it's in my, uh, in my channel list in the random random section um, and up the top here is the Duco Patent Jack it's also a video about that in the uh, random section as well so check those out if you haven't yet alright back to the uh, back to the Adam might add a little bit more into this video but I'd say she's probably getting a bit long so I don't know how much more I'll add before I cut this one off and start a new episode it takes a while to upload so we've just got the uh, got the frame to get cleaned up now and finish doing these handlebars now that the wheels off the rims, they'll be a nice, easy, easy job. Give them a pressure wash and a blast and some primer. Uh, Going to put the new tyres onto the rims before I paint them. And then we won't fill the tubes with air and actually seat them on their beads. Uh, we'll wait until they're painted because that way I can push the tyre back away from the rim. Put a ring of cardboard or masking tape around there to paint them up. And then uh, inflate them with air once they're, once they're painted so I don't damage the paint. Right, add some more in eh? Right, so here's a quick look at what we're up to today. Uh, got the wheels out. I've already um, started cleaning this one up. Quick look at what I've done so far. So that's just with the uh, the wire brush and a bit of sandpaper. Put all the paint out of there, ready for a, a primer. Might prime them before we put the wheels on. I don't know yet. Um, the other side's sort of halfway done. The battery drill went flat, so. I'm getting enough charge out of a out of a battery to do sort of one side and well you know one and a half so it's not too bad. Handlebars are here. Uh, Got to get rid of a bit of the grease. I don't know how I'm going to go with the wire wire brush on the um, on that. Well, it's a little bit sticky and greasy and oily. Might be a bit of a problem. Might clog up the wires. But this is the remains of the inner tube that have melted away on the inside. It's degraded, so we'll scrape that all up. Handlebars are there. Everything that I'm just going to be, you know, wire brushing and cleaning down today. Get as much done as I can, really. I did a um, did a small bit of panel beating on the toolbox. Managed to realign the hinges back inside here, and got the the tops sort of lining up, closing as best I can. So yeah, that'll just get a, um, a clean and a sand down and flattened out, ready for ready for paint as well. So. Add that to the collection and I'll just uh, yeah, carry on and get as much done as I can really. coming up too bad. Um, you're not having too many issues with that stuff that's on there, it's all flicking out. The, the brush is staying okay, it's not all clogged up so good sign, just carry on and I'll bring some more soon. So I decided to grab the frame out of the shed as well and start giving that a clean up. Just uh, spraying and scrubbing at the moment. I'll take it up and, and get the hose and some high pressure water onto it. Don't have access to a steam cleaner anymore like I used to, so I've just got to um, just got to spray this up and scrub away at it. Got a wee toothbrush hiding around here somewhere, getting into all the tight little spots and giving everything a giving everything a, a clean up as best I can. Then we'll hose this off and 
flip it up the other way, do the other side. So yeah, just sort of take a break from the wire brushing. I've got to um, come over here. I've got two wheels done. I've put the other two aside for now. I mean, the machine only runs on two, so the priority is getting getting it ready to run. So I've put the other two wheels aside. These two are, are all cleaned up and ready. Uh, I did come across this on this one. I don't know how well you can see all those marks up in there. But this wheel's been cracked, broken and welded. So you can see the weld line around the bottom there. It's more obvious from the top when you can see the cracks. But still serviceable. Get a tire back on that. Um, yeah, started started doing a little bit more on the handlebars, just uh, brushing away a little bit of that. Got all of this gunk here. This is uh, this is the pile of dissolved rubber, I guess, from the the melted handlebar grip. Whatever was whatever it got into that. So I'll just scrape that off with a knife. Give that a clean, and that's probably about it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give this a give this a hose off and a clean up and unfortunately what I'm probably going to have to do is call this video at this stage um, just looking at the memory card and how things are filling up I've got a fair bit of footage that I've got to get edited and get this one out I know it's not a stage completion like I'd hope for an episode to be you know a, a stage done but what we'll do is probably just call this one an update for now and then when the stage is complete I'll come back and and recap everything and uh yeah, re recap the whole lot and put a whole stage together, I guess. But for now, I just wanted to get an update out because it's been two weeks since the last one. And, uh, I don't know, I haven't got many subscribers yet, but, you know, the ones that I do have are probably interested to see what's going on and carry on watching. So, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to call this one of that, get it edited up, get it out there for you, and uh, press on. It might be a little while, you know, um, before I get the next bit done, but, hey, it is what it is. It's only a hobby. So, cool. See you next time. Thanks for watching.